You know, we all grieve in different ways. And it took me a long time to learn this. I just assumed, when I was grieving, that everyone grieved the way that I grieved. And I'm pretty expressive, and so I would cry, or I would get angry, or I would express my guilt, or, you know, struggle with it, and be pretty expressive about it. And yet I had a beautiful brother of mine who didn't express it at all the way that I did. And I thought for many years that he just didn't grieve, that he didn't just didn't feel it as deeply as I did. Come to find out, as we became young adults, he felt his grief as deeply and powerfully as I did, but he just didn't express it in the same way. He was more quiet. He was more pulled in. And he required for me to kind of ask him questions about it. And I was amazed when I asked the question, how is this for you, Ralph? He began to tell me, and it was powerful for me. As I sat and listened, it really became clear to me, wow, he was grieving too, but he just needed permission to express it. And so a lot of times when my friends just go, oh, no biggie, this didn't really bother me. I don't necessarily just take them at face value. I might ask, you know, this is how it's impacted me. How has it been for you in your grief? How has it shown up in your life? How do you deal with it? How do you cope with it? And how can I best support you? You know, there was a wonderful young man whose mother had been murdered. And uh, he was a, uh, a student that I had been uh, mentoring. And he said, you know, Janet, it doesn't really work for me to talk with you. I mean, that's okay. But he said, I really do better with text. And so actually we supported each other and did a lot of grief work by texting. And I had another, I have another dear friend that loves to write snail mail letters. So she and I communicate via snail mail. And, you know, that's worked out really well. So we just write letters to each other and we call them grief and healing letters. And I don't ever talk with her on the phone, and I very rarely text her, but she loves the snail mail. Now, I've got to tell you about another situation, too, where this incredible person who was going through grief, but appeared to not be affected by it at all. And so what I did was I just put a little note in her box, and I said, how are you doing? Thinking of you. And she wrote back, this sucks, I'm not doing very well. Now, I wouldn't have not gotten that at all by her behavior. If I had judged her just by her behavior in school, in the workplace, I would have thought she was doing okay. But by writing that written note, had I asked her directly, verbally, I don't know if she would have responded to me. But by giving that written note, it was a way you could com I could communicate. I actually worked with a client whose daughter and husband had died in a very tragic car crash. And we had worked together in, you know, in sessions, in face-to-face -face sessions. She left to go to another part of the state. I could no longer do those face-to-faces with her. So about every month or so, I would just send her a little card that would say, be gentle with yourself. I know the anniversary is coming up. I know your husband's wedding anniversary is coming up. I know this is happening. I know your son's graduating from school, and I know, you know, your daughter would have been there. So tell me, you know, how it's been for you, and just know I'm sending you energy. Be gentle with yourself. So she goes, I don't hear from her for about a year and a half, and I say, you know what, she's probably sick of hearing from me. So I stopped writing the letters. She called me on the phone a week after I made that decision. And she said, Janet, I just want you to know I'm alive today because of those letters. She said, where I moved to, no one knew what happened to me. I kept it to myself. And she said, I was literally thinking about killing myself because no one understood and I felt so alone. And I got your letter in the mail. So my friends don't underestimate the power of reaching out and don't underestimate that everyone deals with grief differently and is going to behave differently. There's no right or wrong way. 
but let's reach out to each other in the best way that we can and see if we can find out how we can best support.